Whoa, 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 don't skip through this bit of the video. Please don't, because you could be of a shout to win a signed Gillingham Away shirt, courtesy of our sponsor, CNA Building Products. CNA Building Products have put up a competition where you could sign up through the link in the description down below for your chance to win a signed Gillingham Away shirt. To be able to do this, you have to do two things. You have to go to the link in the description down below, you have to put in your email, oh, it was three things actually, and then you have to answer the main question. And the question is, to be able to get a chance to win a Jules away shirt, and hopefully it's quite easy, is who won the first German Jules goal of the season competition? And uh, if you want a clue, if you really need one, this might help. Turn it away by Wimbledon. It's going to be a shot from distance. And it's a great shot. And what a goal. And Jules are now 2-1 up. What a fantastic goal that is from Alex. Welcome to German Jules. Jules are back at home for their first league match in December against Bradford City. Your German Jules show will bring you a live match reaction today from your host, Reese. Luke is back predicting the starting lineup in his Luke's 11 this afternoon. Adam Westgate will be our live match reporter today to see if the Jules can pick up those early Christmas points at Priestfield Stadium, Schoen das du Darbist und Los geht's Jules! Welcome to the German Jewish Show as Gillingham take on Bradford City home at Priestwood Stadium this afternoon. It feels like an A since Gillingham had a game and particularly a German Jewish video as well. So hopefully we can walk away with this edition, our first one in December, with three points against Bradford City. I'm going to be your host, Reese, to take you through every step of today's game. Thank you very much for stopping by on this German Jewish Show. Any Bradford fans here, thank you very much for stopping by also. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through Buy Me A Coffee and any donations are much appreciated. And if you would like to reach out to German Jules, you can do so by using our WhatsApp. The links are all these in the description down below. And of course, we've got Adam Westgate. He's going to the game this afternoon. It might be cold at Priestwood Stadium. Who knows? I'm sure he have some warm words to say to us. Let's hear what they are. Well, good afternoon, Reese. I'm going to start today by making an apology to everyone, not for the weather, I'm down a cameraman, so I'm completely bringing down the tone of the show, but we soldier on. I've just seen the team sheet. Pretty confident that we'll do all right. I'm hoping that Bond can continue. Well, he played bloody brilliantly against Charlton, didn't he? And we've had a week off, so a bit more time to recover. I'm pretty confident today. I mean, Bradford will be tricky, don't get me wrong. And I've said all along, we need to stay within three or four points of the playoffs, which we're doing at the moment. Get to January, get those what I perceive to be two or three signings that that we're going to need, we're going to get. I think we'll have one or two players out, but I think we're only going to do two or three signings, but that can make a big difference. And when Ollie Hawkins comes back, I think that's going to help. But not today, unfortunately. I was hoping he'd be back, but I think Bon can continue his good form. Obviously, we've been scoring more goals. This has been positive. I'm going to stay on that train of thought that the Gladiators are going to get out there and they're going to bang in the goals against Bradford. Just as the wind's getting in my face, the Jills will get in the face of the Bantams. Or Johnny Williams them again. Up the Jills. And of course, we have the German Jules fan zone. Fans have been getting in contact with the show. Let's hear what they have to say about our game this afternoon. Hi, Rich. Just arrived at Priestfield, ready for the game. I think today it's going to be a 2-1 victory. Macaulay Bond and George Lapsley. Lost against Jules. Morning, Rich. Hope you're well. The result today is going to be 3-1 Jules. It's going to be Johnny Williams, Scott Malone and Robbie McKenzie. Up the Jules. All take Jules. A Merry Christmas race and every gym, every Jill sign out there. Hi Reese, Finn here. Really excited about today's game first Bradford. I think Jill's are gonna win 3-0. I think McCordy Bomb will grab a brace and Johnny Williams is gone. What's going to Good afternoon, Reese Ben here. Just part up for this afternoon's game at home to Bradford City. Hope you have had an enjoyable couple of weeks. Um, my score prediction for this afternoon's game, I am going to go for a 2-1 Jules win. I'm going to say Tim Dieng to score for us. And I'm going to say Johnny Williams to wrap it up for us. I don't, th I don't think Bradford fans would like that somehow. Uh, anyway, fingers crossed for three points and uh, Los Gis Jules. Hi Luce, this is Aidan, it's my birthday today and I'm, and I'm going to be mascot. I think it's going to be one nil today and Madison is going to score. <laughs> Yes, it is Jaden's birthday today, so a big happy birthday from everyone here at German Jills to you, Jaden. You are also our mascot at Gillingham today, along with Aiden. I hope you two have a fantastic day, and hopefully you'll bring us the luck we need to get the three points. Let's head over to Priestfield Stadium for today's live match reaction. 
Los Gays Jails. Unfortunately, I follow was at working for the first 25 or 6 minutes of this game. So what you're going to see now is cutting to me about 27 or so minutes into the game when I managed to get everything up and running. Happens sometimes that I follow doesn't work. But yeah, I missed, I think, one highlight when Gillingham had a shot that was saved on the line, maybe. That's the only thing I think I've missed. So uh, yeah, here is uh, the game and the German Jewish show from about 27 minutes in. We have it. We are back. We are here. We have a live feed of this game. My goodness me. We are finally back on track. Wow. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Great news. Great news. Okay. We're 27 minutes in. Um, so. This is going to be the weirdest start to a German Jill's uh, first half I could ever imagine. So, um, those who are currently uh, watching on YouTube, which you will be, I'm sure, later, we are starting this game at 27 minutes. Now, I'm aware that we may be missing something uh, at some point, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there may be a highlight that won't be in this video in the first 27 minutes. So, I can only apologize for that. But for the sake of it, I need to say a thank you very much for our sponsor, CNA Building Products, for sponsoring the channel and all the support they've given us for the season so far. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're, under, uh, we're underway. It's 28 minutes in. It feels very strange that we're here, but um, we are going to see how this game from this point <laughs> unfolds, I suppose. <laughs> it's crazy to think that this is the first home league game of December so far, and we're in the 16th of December, which is quite mad, actually. And that's a really poor clearance by Jake Turner. He's put a lot of pressure on Maloney. He's asked a lot, and it's gone to Gilead instead. He's going to come in from the right-hand side. It's an attack from Bradford. It goes across the box, and it's going to be a great chance, and it's gone to the back of there for Bradford, and Walker's put it in the bottom left-hand corner. And I've got to say one thing. It's really poor work from Jake Turner. We're trying to play this nice, nilky football, but he plays it out to the right-hand side, to his left-hand side, put a lot of pressure on Malone, who has dispossessed, and unfortunately for him, he went to the right-hand side from Gilead, put it across the box, and it fell to Walker in the end. It went into the back of the net. And I have to say, it is really poor defensive work from Gillingham. And, you know, there are times where you'd like to play this nice silky football at the back, but sometimes you just got to clear your lines. And it just fell to Walker really nicely on the left-hand side. He couldn't miss, really. Although he did put it in the left-hand corner really tidily. Unfortunately for Gillingham, it did find the back of the net. And as it currently stands, it is Gillingham nil, Bradford City 1. Well, Bradford have picked it up again on the right hand side, but the ref has blown for half time. So at half time, it is Gillingham nil, Bradford City one, and on the line we have Adam Westgate. Good afternoon. So, um, Adam, I missed the first, what, 25 minutes of this match. I mean, did I miss anything? Is there anything you need to fill me in on, really? <laughs> Um, well, there was some football played, allegedly, and Bradford scored a goal, which you saw. So, aside from that, I probably think you had a nicer time than we did. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was just pedestrian. It wasn't, it wasn't Wickham away bad, or you know, the last time we were there, or anything like that. But no, it's just we're just very pedestrian at the moment, and sitting there one nil as you always are, but. It's not inspiring at the moment. Do you see Gillingham find a way back into this game? Because obviously I've not really seen the flow of the match, so maybe you have a better outlook than I do. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Number one, 1-0. One you always can. And number two, Bradford look good, but they don't look phenomenal. If we make some changes, it's absolutely there for the taking. But equally, their manager looks a bit tetchy as well. So I don't think he's just going to say, carry on as you are. So I think this game could realistically go either way. We've got options on the bench and hopefully we see Hawkins at least for a bit today because um, he must be able to do 45 or 30 minutes if he's on the bench. Well, I saw Hawkins on the bench and I was hoping that he'd get back on at least to see him. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you, I mean, we're, we're notoriously bad at going uh, <laughs> when we go behind. So hopefully this will be the one that we turn around. So do you, your prediction, what was it? 3-1 you went for or 3-0? <laughs> do you, do you... No, well, I went for 2-1 originally and then I went for the 3-0 with Johnny Williams. But I think Bradford have put an end to that. So I'm going to stick with my 2-1. There's still one goal for Bradford, but two for Jill. So I'll, I'll take that now. Okay, well, we'll catch up at full time and hopefully that comes to fruition. See you then. So we are about to get underway for the second half. And I just want to say now, actually, uh, for those uh, who are who are watching, um, like <laughs> there was a real problem with I follow in the first half. And if you, and unfortunately, it means that I, I miss a lot of the a lot of the normal things that I do with uh, with the editing and uh, and and with the, uh, the a lot of the highlights. They're not there. So a really a big apology for that. I can't do much about that, unfortunately. So the only highlight you got in the first half was the Bradford City goal. 
hopefully this half is a lot more uh, a lot more normal in terms of the content creation uh, but I apologize once again and I can't really do much about that it happens occasionally but hopefully you can still enjoy the video as much as possible uh, but it is an unusual one today I grant anyway on with the second half a bit more normality has been restored and hopefully Jules can get back into this game Oh, there's a poor pass there. And Mahoney's put the ball on the right hand side. Can he get down it? Oh, that's a really poor challenge there. And that's going to be a yellow card uh, for Prefacy. Uh, is it Platt that's beginning the yellow card? It is. I have to say as well, I'm going to put this in the highlight rule because I've got to flesh it out somehow. But I've got to say, you know what? If Mahoney goes through there, I didn't say he was running centre. Was it Bon? But Jules would have had a great opportunity. You know, it's one of those things that uh, I reckon Platt possibly could have saved a, a goal there for Bradford and an equaliser. This is what just again, proper rugby. Rugby, rugby style tackle you'd expect to see at Twickenham it really is a rugby tackle pulling down a Mahoney by Platt and uh, the, the most clear yellow card I think you're ever going to see <laughs> still nil, uh, still 1-0 sorry Williams standing over the ball for Chillingham on the right hand side as he whips it into the box can we get on the end of this a great shot oh god it just goes over the bar it's a great header by Aimer but it just didn't dip quite enough for a, for a shot on the target it was a decent delivery in as well by Williams who really got some whip on it and uh, unfortunately just for Aimer he just couldn't quite dip it down enough to get it on target but Jules have been on the last five or so minutes really peppering the the, the Bradford area essentially through free kicks actually Bradford keep, <laughs> keep taking down Jules players and getting yellow cards for their troubles but as a result, Jill still can't pounce and get a goal in this game. And it still is 1-0 Bradford. But I think Gillingham with a team like the score at the moment. So there's a big moment now. I don't know if you could hear it, but I think it's Oliver Hawkins is going to come on for his first game of the season. There he is. We're going to put this in the highlight reel. Bond's coming on for Hawkins. And what a moment this is. We've been yearning for someone like Hawkins for such a long time on this pitch because I think possibly even when Harris was here, this was kind of the the, the kind of player we needed for, to, to match his style of play. And hopefully he can come on and he can deliver something in this match. But fantastic to see Hawkins back on the pitch. And it is so good to see. I'm going to put it in the highlight like real because I, I imagine every scores from this three kick but still it's great to have Hawkins back Oh, could Bradford be coming forward and they got a little bit of momentum and Jill's got some defensive work to do it's an over the left hand side of Richards it's going to go to him in the end and he's got on the inside there's going to be a shot surely he takes a shot and it blasts over the bar but again really good passing work by Bradford and Gillingham caught a little bit sleepy at the back there as there's, there's a few overlap one on the left hand side by Richards and it was easily cut inside from Mahoney you know as he's trying to go to the top corner luckily for Jules he didn't manage to find it but my goodness me Gillingham if they go 2-0 down we know this game is absolutely curtain Still 1-0 Bradford. So Bradford got a freaking very dangerous position. Can be taken by Halliday or Cook. It's going to be Cook who takes it. It takes the shot and it's gone to the back of the net and it's a fantastic free kick by Cook. And, you know, when you've got someone as good as him who can take a ball and take a shot like that, you've got to be very careful. The wall jumped. He kept it low and it went into the left-hand side of the goal and Jake Turner just couldn't reach it. And I have to say, after all of Gillingham's attempt to try and get back into this game, if you have someone like Cook... There's always going to be a threat. There's going to be a goal. And there it is. And there's no one laying behind the wall. Isn't that the trend these days? That someone lays behind the wall to stop that? Well, it's cost drilling on this game, potentially. There's many other things that's cost drilling on this game. But unfortunately, it hasn't worked out for Gillingham. And uh, Bradford <sighs> have gone tune it up. Good goal by Cook. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it looks like the three points are heading up to Yorkshire. And that is full time and Gillingham come out of this game. Well, we've nothing to show for any effort that was put in. But let's go over to Adam Westgate to hear his final thoughts for this 2-0 loss against Bradford City. Well, difficult what to say on this game, isn't it? Other than subpar. We had a few moments where we had a small glimmer of hope. And I'm trying to be kind, you know, five minutes in the second half, I'd say maybe eight. First half, okay, we didn't look terrible at first, but we just died down after the first, I think it was 10 or 12 minutes, I'd probably guess. And Bradford deserved the win, there was no doubt. They just played better. Positive note, Hawkins came in, didn't look too bad. Obviously not match fit yet, but and not sharp, but he looked, he looked to be making us better in what he did. It's just the positions he got in and the way he did it. Obviously, I've been saying with Bond, He's been trying to be a lone striker, target man. He's not that. There's a lot of good stuff that he does, but this is what Hawkins does. So on that note, if we have him back, that should help a lot. Him and Nichols got an awful lot of goals between them. We go to Forest Green on Friday. Hopefully, well, no, not hopefully. We must do better than that because we'd lose against anyone 
on that performance. So trying to stay positive, but we just have to get back to some sort of consistent form and try and keep up for January. Well, Lord Skeet's chills off to Forest Green. <laughs>